A huge thanks to my Patreon supporters for making this episode possible. Good morning, fellow mathematicians! Way you come back to another video. In last time, we have talked a lot about um, applications of analytic number theoretical stuff yet again. So. Binet's second formula for log gamma and a few special cases and today we would like to take a look at a very special but really generalized case of this integral right here. We are going to take a look at this one today. It's an integral being parameterized in t. So on the other side we are going to get a function with respect to t out and yeah our main tool is going to be Binet's second formula for log gamma. You can find the link to everything down there in the description that we are going to use today. But before we get into the main video I would like to thank today's sponsor no one. Finally after a few weeks I don't have a sponsor at hand for a video. I would just like to thank each and every one of my patrons, of my members of this channel and everyone who supported Zach Star 69 and me on a STEM merge. So a huge thank you to you guys. Um, also we got some very nice non-linear dynamic stuff now going. I'm so proud of this. It looks just hella amazing. You can find the link down there too. So if you also want to support the channel, go over to STEM merge, buy something for example for yourself or I don't know, support the channel on Patreon. I highly appreciate it. and. It's absolutely amazing. Thank you for all your support. Now we are going to dive right in. So at first I want you guys to remember this very easy to remember formula that you really shouldn't forget because it's so easy to remember. I really don't see why anyone should actually forget it. So log of gamma of z for the real part of z being strictly greater than zero is going to be defined as being the log of z times z minus one half. Okay and then we are going to get negative z plus log of 2 pi, but the square root of that, plus 2 times, and now we are going to get this integral right here from 0 to infinity of the inverse tangent of x divided by z divided by e to the 2 pi x minus 1 integrate with respect to x. This right here is Binet's second formula for log gamma. It's a very long formula, but it's extremely powerful because you might notice that this integral that we are having here is basically nearly the same as the one that we're having here. We just need to find what we need to change and substitute in this integral for us to get this one out on the other side. So the first thing you might notice is that we need to plug in z being equal to 1 probably in some way into here such that we are going to get a single variable inverse tangent. Other than that, we want to have some parameter t up here in the exponential function, but at the moment we are going to have a 2 pi up here. So we are going to fill around with this whole idea of substituting stuff a tiny little bit, such that we arrive from what we have here at this integral and then we just plug in, in initial conditions for z and then we are basically done. So it's as easy as it is. We have applied it before, so it's not a big deal. Now, at first I would like to rearrange a bit of stuff in this integrata right here. So we are going to take a look at the integral from zero to infinity of the inverse tangent of x divided by z divided by e to the two par x minus one integrate with respect to x. So our first goal is to get a parameter t up here into our exponential function. For this we would like to introduce a substitution. Um, let's say this 2 pi x that we are going to have here. We want to substitute it by some parameter t times a new variable, let's say y. Now we are going to implicit differentiate both sides, leaving us with dx being hence nothing but, okay we can divide both sides by 2 because it's not equal to 0 because pi is equal to 3, hence 6 is not equal to 0 because it's success of 5, you know what I'm talking about, <laughs> that was a great outtake I had last time around. So we are going to get t divided by 2 pi times dy being equal to dx. Now you might notice that our bounds that we are going to have here are going to go from 0 to infinity respectively yet again if we say that our t is strictly greater than 0 on the one hand, okay, but we also don't want it to be negative, okay, other than that we would probably get a negative infinity up here, this is not something we want. For all of this to converge we also need t to be strictly greater than 0. If our t were equal to zero, then we would get one minus one, which is a pole in this whole thing. We do not want this. So t being greater than zero is a given condition here. We are going to arrive at an integral from zero to infinity. Okay, just taking the limits yet again, works out. And then we are going to get the inverse tension of, okay, x is nothing but t over two pi times y. Okay, meaning we are going to get the inverse tangent of 
Okay, I'm going to write everything out. This is going to give us t over 2 plus z times y divided by, okay, by our substitution, we are going to get e to the t times y of power, t times y through power, ah, y through power, there it is again, times dy. But also do not forget that we are going to get this factor of t over 2 power. And we are going to bring it to the front. Okay, now we are at this point, and this is good because this integral that we're having here is basically just this one, but we still need to plug a value for z into here such that we are going to get a single variable uh, inverse tension out. What value for z do we need to plug into there such that we only have y in here? Well, I mean t over 2 plus z must be equal to 1 such that we only have a y in here. Meaning, if t over 2 plus z is nothing but 1, we are going to multiply both sides by z leaving us with z being equal to t over 2 pi. We're going to plug this value into the whole Binet's second formula for log gamma. And then we are basically already done by just solving for our integral that we are desiring because the one that we are going to get out on the other side is exactly this integral that we are seeking. Meaning what we are going to have here for z being equal to t over 2 pi is going to be just t over 2 pi times our integral that we are desiring. So let us plug everything into our Binet's formula and see what we are going to get. Leaving us overall with the log of gamma of t over 2 pi being hence equal to, okay, we are going to get the log of t over 2 pi times t over 2 pi minus 1 half. Okay, now we are also going to get minus t over 2 pi plus the log of square root of 2 pi. And also we are going to get plus 2 times t over 2 pi times our integral i. You might notice that 2 and 2 is going to cancel out very nicely. And now we can just multiply both sides by the multiplicative inverse of t over pi, meaning pi over t. Okay, you see why t must be um, strictly greater than 0 because otherwise we couldn't even solve for our integral i in the first place by doing the substitution. And yeah, then we are just going to bring all the other stuff to the other side, leaving us overall the value of r being equal to, okay, we are going to get pa over t times. On the one hand, we are going to get log of gamma of t over 2 pa. Then we are going to get minus, okay, now we are going to have, um, let me see for a second, we are going to get t over 2 pa times the log of t over 2 pi. Negative and negative is going to become positive, leaving us with plus 1 half times log of t over 2 pi. And in the end, we are also going to get plus t over 2 pi and negative log of square root of 2 pi. And basically, this already settles everything, but if I'm not mistaken, we can still manipulate this a tiny little bit more such that we are going to bring one or two factors together. I believe that we can do anything with this, this and this expression right here, but you might notice something. If we have log of square root of 2 pi, square root is going to be a factor of one half that we can bring to the front. Meaning this right here is nothing but negative one half times the log of 2 pi. Now there's one other cool thing, you might notice that we have one half times the log of something over 2 pi. Meaning if we were to drag the negative sign to the inside, we can actually multiplicatively inverse, and take the multiplicative inverse of the argument here, leaving us with one half times log of t over 2 pi plus one half times log of 1 over 2 pi. If we were to use logarithm rules, we can actually bring those two together to being nothing but, okay, we are going to end up with a final formula. This is the only simplification I could possibly think of. Log of gamma of t over 2 pi. Other than that, negative t over 2 pi times the log of t over 2 pi. Other than that, plus t over 2 pi. And last but not least, we are going to get plus 1 half times the logarithm of t over 2 pi times 1 over 2 pi is going to give us t over 4 pi squared. And this right here is the answer for our integral that we are having here.
And this basically settles it. Thank you guys for watching. If you enjoyed this video, then please like, subscribe, and recommend channel flag. I hope you did like this little series on Binet's second formula. Binet's first formula is going to come out pretty soon. Still need to uh, figure out some stuff in the derivation. It's not too easy. I'm doing everything from scratch. So it's not very easy to derive if you ask me because there's a lot of differential equation stuff going on, honestly. So finding out using initial values um, like constants, it's, it's not too easy but I'm going to wrap my head around it. Other than that, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out STEM merch. It's very cool. This thing right here turned out so nicely. This right here was the first version. On the new version that you can find over on STEM merch, those are actually put into little boxes, just like those um, special cases up here with an arrow pointing to the tau axis. This just has to do with the fact that those are degenerate cases, you could say, special cases of something happen, uh, happening at the boundaries. Um, this design actually got approved by Steven Strogat himself, which is really cool if you ask me. I linked him on Twitter and he thought that this design looks absolutely amazing. He thought that it's really good. I'm actually proud of the bifurcation diagram. I made all of those um, for myself it was a lot of work. I think I put in like 30 hours into making this whole thing in, in very nice quality. So it was a lot of um, stuff I had to do. But it was worth it if you ask me because this background is just absolutely um, himlish. It's so heavenly. Other than that you can find um, down here um, nonlinear dynamics and chaos. I hope you can read it. Um, if you can, then just take a look at Stemmerd. <laughs> okay, thank you guys for watching. Don't forget to check out Flamble Maths 2. Two, we are doing integration over there and differentiation right now. And until the next video, I'm sure you guys, Flamble Day, thank you for all your support. I really can't thank you guys enough. Ciao.